main reason I got these was uh, I needed the double trailer. Which, it's in pretty good shape. Has some of that mildew on it, but we all know that pressure washer can get that off. Tire's going flat. Luckily, I made it home. We had to put air in it before we left. I got an extremely good deal. I'm happy. He was happy. Um, these things are in honestly really good shape. For what year they are, I mean, the inside's super clean. Here's the other one, next to that one. Oh yeah. Yeah guys, you gotta get these deals when, they, when they're posted up. This was posted for maybe, I'm not really sure how long, but he changed the price and dropped it, which told me that he was super motivated to sell. And hit him up, drove over there, we, ate, we were able to work out a deal. Okay, sweet. Trailer lights even work. Years ago, because he thought he was going to fix them up. And he didn't. So, it is what it is. The price he gave me for the trailer alone was worth it. So, they're dusty and dirty, but he did have them covered up. Um, they've just been covered up for a while. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pressure wash these, get them washed up, get some of this mildew off the skis and the trailer, and see how they look from there.
cleaned up really nicely. Um, I definitely want to fix this trailer up and make it really nice and it's going to be the trailer I'm going to use personally for everything uh, moving the jet skis and stuff the wood looks good the holes to both these look super clean no scratches or dents all around super happy with it they look great Hopefully they run. I did notice this one still has a battery hookup and it turns over, so that's cool. I did do a compression check last night. This one appears to be a little fresher of the two, which makes sense. Well, kind of doesn't make sense. It was the one that was registered in 2010, not 2012. Um, we'll start with it. It does have one cylinder that's a tad bit lower, but it might just be because it's been sitting roughly 10 to 13 years and the registration for this oh plugs here's the key that's always good fire extinguisher i don't think so Everything looks clean in here. That looks new. It definitely looks new. And a mess. Jeez. Oh man. Fuel lines look new. Yeah, it's got a date of 93 on it, but it's clean. Guys, so I made a huge mistake. I put a battery on the other one without this cover on top. And I winded up burning the shit out of the wiring. I am beyond sad. So that just created a new project. Luckily, I have another SL650 that looks like shit, but runs and has good wires. So probably just gonna take the whole box out of the other one and bring it over here. All right, well, we're gonna dive into this SL650 because this one is I need to step away from it. So, uh, Let's see, I know that the PTO cylinder has low compression on this. The other ones have 120 uh, on the dot. The last one I think had like 95 or something like that. Uh, so I have some options. This one has all good cylinders. My other SL650, aka the Sunk Ski, has three good 120 PSI cylinders. So I have some choices to uh, throw another cylinder on here. But I haven't even taken a look at this one. I, I started on this one because it had better compression on all three cylinders, but then it pretty much burned itself up before I could even do anything. Um, FYI, make sure the battery cover is on because it was not on. Much 
actually. So here's the inside of this one. She's pretty clean. Um, you see it still has the, the original fuel pump and auto cock on it. Now we got that cover off and the old fuel pump. Um, and we're going to be upgrading with one of these, which is terrible. All right, finally got the carbs out. Uh, yeah, it was it was tough. It was every bit of 45 minutes to an hour to get those six bolts off. Word of advice, wear some kind of sleeve because your arm's going to be rubbing against right here right here and it will uh, definitely come in handy also go ahead and remove all these electricals and try and get them as flat as possible from both these because the wrench will just keep hitting all the uh, wires and a uh, 12 millimeter wrench you can't use the box end all the way um, I actually have a another SL 650 engine right here I'll show you so yeah, the uh, best way to get these carburetor bolts off is these two right here, these two, and these two. And you can't use the box end for very long because once that gets all the way down there, it will uh, it'll get trapped and then you'll have to screw it back in. So it's super annoying. Um, it's just tough. It's a pain in the ass.
at them rebuilding the carburetors. Um, one thing I want to do before I put them back in is I want to go ahead and pull this cylinder. Uh, it was all both these were at 120. This one was at 80. Um, I do have another engine over here from the sunk ski, uh, which actually this engine still runs. Uh, all three of these cylinders are at uh, 118. So I'm going to pull this one, which was the highest. Uh, it was like right under 120. It was like 118 also, I guess. Um, under 18, 19. We're going to put that cylinder and everything onto that ski. Uh, bought some gaskets off of eBay earlier in the week. So it should be pretty easy. So let's go ahead and pull in and let's see what's going on. It doesn't look too bad actually. Here's the piston. Um, it's got some pretty, pretty bad cracks in it. The rings look actually really nice though. Um, not sure what happened, but I will say it does appear that they they parked it. Got the head and the cylinder off the sunk engine, and we're not going to use this one. Uh, it's just this one's just as bad, if not worse. It's just this thing's just so pitted on both sides. Um, I cannot believe this thing puts out 119 psi, but we're going to pass and possibly just pull a cylinder off that Polaris. So I don't know. And pulled off the PTO and damn if it's not in horrible shape look at those chunks taken off the side look at this head Hang on, let me focus it yeah I mean what the hell's up with this all right whatever it's fine the skis came with the trailer this cylinder it looks pretty good head looks good compression was good we're still on this one I'll put it on that one all right guys so we got this middle cylinder off or the center whatever you want to call it and yes it looks very good um we're gonna go ahead and pull it off and use the cylinder and everything for that one and then we should drain the gas through the carbs on it should be good to go got the new used piston in here cleaned it up a little bit and um yeah You want to make sure it says up when you put it on, which they did. All right, guys, so I got the gas tank out of this one and drained about two gallons of old stagnant gas out. About a week ago, I got the gas tank out of that one and actually washed it out and cleaned it and it's been drying. So I'm just going to put that one in this one and let that one uh, dry some other day. And But funny thing is, is the manufacturing date of this one was 11-10-1993. Uh, this one was 11-11-1993. So one day apart. Pretty cool. Okay, guys, it's the next day. Um... I got it all back together, got the battery in, basically, uh, by the time I got done with the cylinder and everything, 
again everything put back together is about nine ran to the gas station got the five gallons of gas uh, wanted to pre-mix some of the gas because I didn't know how long this was sitting uh, by that time it was super late I uh, decided to put gas in it spray some starter fluid and kind of pop it off a couple times which then caused it to fill up with uh, fluid over here and um, yeah and I got the new fuel pump right there and uh, she wants to run so it's the next day um, I'm gonna hopefully get her to run before I clean up everything self You want to ride back? All right. 